Hi, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK. Welcome to my channel. First time passing, you know the drill. Thumbs up, share, subscribe, like. Integrate in comment with my subscribers as well. And um, for my subscribers, thank you. I really appreciate the fact that you um, stay with me, that you make your little comments. You know, it's really, really nice of you to take time out of your busy day to look at my videos. So this one, this one. Middle class drug users are to be targeted and passports, driving licenses to be confiscated. Guardian headlines, middle class drug users could lose UK passports. Now, what the hell is that? Middle class implies that number one, you're educated. Number two, you have a decent job. Number three, you're, you've got, you know, you've probably got property. That's what a middle class person is. Somebody who's gone to work, works hard, and who has steadily provided the basic comforts. But you know what these people who have perceptions and stereotypes of black people think? Black people are lazy, aren't they? Black people don't work. Black people are criminals. So how the hell can they afford a house? How the hell can they afford that car? They don't work. They're on the dole. So they're obviously dealing with drugs, aren't they? So if we see any middle class aspiring blacks driving a nice car, we're going to take their passport and we're going to take their driving licence away because it has to be drug related because these little buggers, they don't work. So they must have acquired it by criminal means. Have you ever heard of anything so ludicrous? The government just cannot stand that black people defy the stereotype. They cannot stand that black people can be considered as decent, hard-working human beings. They have to criminalise them. They have to. A black person shouldn't be able to get a house. They shouldn't be able to afford a car. They shouldn't be able to educate themselves. How the hell did they do that? After all the obstacles we put in their way to stop them from getting anywhere. How the hell did they do that? Has to be through criminal means. Has to be. They have to be drug dealers. And that is why they cannot legalise marijuana like in any other country because that is the only leg they've got to stand on to criminalise black people or anybody who has a spliff or anybody who smokes. The amount of white people, just because I'm black, who come into my shop and say, oh, do you sell ganja? No, I bloody don't. Go over there, that white shop, that shop over there, they might. Why bloody come to me? Honestly. The stereotype. I don't even bloody smoke, but the stereotype. I know dreads, I know, I know dreads that don't smoke. But the assumption is every dread is, is a ganja smoker. That's the assumption. If you're black, you smoke ganja. It's so annoying. Get rid of those that myopic view you have of black people. Anyway, let's not take this personally. Let's pretend. Let's have a game of pretend. Let's pretend that this... New led, this new law, this 10-year strategy, has got nothing to do with black people. Even though they mention passports, so they have to be foreign offenders, let's make believe it's got nothing to do with black people, but it's got to do with anyone who doesn't have anyone. Well, anybody can have a passport, can't they? Whether they're born here or they're not born here. But we're assuming, well, oh. The thing is, with this NC-19, anything is possible. With this 
I have to bring up in every video. But anything is possible because with the deprivation of citizenship. But the funny thing is, is that what I don't understand is that before 1962, before um, the Caribbean emancipated themselves and went independent, we don't, anybody born in, in the UK before that date were legitimately British by default, automatically British. When my mother, even my mother, she was automatically British because Jamaica was a part of the British Empire. And so was her, my grandmother. They were part of the British Empire. So for, before 1962, all of them lot, they were British anyway. So I don't know what they're trying to do. I really, well, I do know what they're trying to do. I do know what they're trying to do. But the fact of the matter is, you know, I don't even know what to say about this. I mean, when I saw it, and the funny thing is, is that the person who sent it to me, they sent it to me as a joke to say that, um, um, the middle class, they said 10, 10 out of 12 are drug dealers or something. And then the joke was, you know, because they were debating it in Parliament, well, that means that one of, you know, how many of you MPs are taking drugs? That was supposed to be the joke. But, of course, you know, I saw the joke, but what I was more interested in is the middle class bit you know, taking away your passport and your and your driving license just because you're middle class and linking that with criminality. And I don't know how many of you saw that video where that black guy, he was a bank manager and he was driving a nice car because he had a good job. But the police stopped him. And on top of that, he had some cash in his house. The police stopped him, hauled him in jail, claiming that he got his property and his house and his car through money laundering. He showed them all the bank statements. But I don't know how much time he did. But by the time he came out, he'd lost his job as a manager and had to go back as a as a um, assistant manager. But his mojo had gone. He couldn't believe it. He was the type that used to say, you know, look at, you know, look down on certain blacks as if to say, you know, oh, it's because you look a certain way, that's why you get picked on. Or because you behave in a certain way, that's why you get picked on. If you're living a decent life, the police don't trouble you, the police don't stop you. This was a guy, decent guy, going to work every day, got his house with his wife and his kids. Please stopped him. Said he was money laundering. If you choose, if, if as a black, if as a person of colour, you flaunt your affluence in front of a cop who's having a bad day, woe well and be tied. Because you could be seen as drug dealing. Because how the hell can anybody in this day and age, when you're supposed to be struggling, afford, afford an XJX or one of those a Mercedes or one of those BM, flashy BMWs. How the hell do you afford it? But they forget that black people, they don't go on holiday as much and they sacrifice more to get what they want. And when they work hard, they want to show it off. But you can't show off in England. You're not allowed to show off in England. Keep your bloody butt quiet. Keep out of sight with your riches. We don't want to see it. We don't want you rubbing your riches in our noses. That's the old bill. They prefer you to look like, well, you can't win. You look like a bloody criminal, they pick you up. You look too affluent, they pick you up. So what the hell can you do? I told you I'd get emotional on this one, didn't I? Successful middle class goes against the stereotype that black people are lazy and criminally minded. They want to destroy that notion that they can be anything else, even though we have Robert Walker, Idris Elba, 
Julie Sarpong and many others, affluent blacks on TV, are they going to be accused of drugs? Drug dealing? If you're living well, it must be via criminal means. So they'll stop you, they'll go through your phone and they'll go to all your dealers, contacts, all your contacts who they claim are your clients. I mean, why do they have to believe everybody's a drug dealer? It's, it's, it's fascinating. And I'm sure... The um, people who are drug dealers, I'm sure they have to be a minority. I mean, there was one, um, I don't even know if it was this country. There's this guy, a Chinese guy. And he, and he had a case full of, I don't know if it's weed, but I think the, the taxi driver said it was a strong smell of weed. So he called the old bill and I don't know how many kegs of weed he had on it. But he would get away with it if it wasn't for that was if it wasn't for that um, taxi, because he doesn't look like your stereotypical drug dealer. And the thing is, if a black catch a black person with drugs, it's usually a little bloody spliff. It's not like in America where they do the you know you do get black people doing a class drugs. Over here, it's more likely that they're walking with a bloody spliff, if anything, for personal use. Oh, but you're not supposed to have anything for personal use. You're not even supposed to have that on you. But that would be the that would be the extent, and that's what they call drug dealing. The fact that you might have a little spliff on you. Oh dear. How do you prove that you have not used drugs to finance your lifestyle? How do you prove that? I mean, have the police got time or do they even care that you can show them bank statements, showing all your payments, showing your salary going in, showing your payments going out, showing if you have any look of sea of in? Do they really care? Doubt it. Because they'll make sure they lock you up long enough and then by the time you've proved it if you if you're lucky you can get a lawyer that's going to drain you dry i don't know that's all i wanted to say really i'm not i'm not gonna make it too long it's just so frustrating it's almost like they just want to get everyone you can't even whether you're an honest by if you're an honest abiding citizen or whether you're a criminal, you're just in the same boat. They just want an excuse to get everyone. And it's irritating. Anyway, when's that come out? Anyway, middle class drug dealers. Well it's a ten year strategy. I don't know when it comes into place. But they're working on it, I guess. Watch this space.